I should go outside. Huh? Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, did you hear all that? <laughs> well, the wait is finally over and ML Edie is here. Let's get into it. Alright, so Solitaria of the Snow, the new ML5 coming out in a few weeks, is a light mage, uh, the Taurus star sign, so that means that she is the same star sign as Dizzy. So if you're familiar with how you build Dizzy, it'll be the same here. Um, she gets some free effectiveness in her awakenings. Looks like her imprint concentration also has effectiveness, so if you decide to go the high debuffer route with her, it'll be pretty easy to do that. Um, we know we can build Dizzy pretty tanky, and even with decent speed as well. So I think that you will not have any problems building, you know, her to be pretty thick, have decent speed and decent effectiveness to land her debuffs. Okay, so Solitaria's skill 2 is I want to go home. It is a passive ability, and it decreases the amount of focus gained by the enemy by 100%. So that's just by her existing. The enemy can't gain focus whatsoever. Uh, when the caster is buffed at the start of the turn, has a 70% chance to grant Daydream for one turn, Looks like you can molar that to 100%. And Daydream gives her an additional, looks like it's a buff that cannot be removed. Yeah, it can't be dispelled. And when she has Daydream and she attacks, it'll inflict a random debuff on the target for one turn. So that's interesting. Completely denying your opponent focus is going to be very, very strong against any hero that uses focus. So the two that immediately come to mind are Seaside Bologna and Remnant Violet. If Seaside Bologna doesn't get focused, she'll literally do nothing because pretty much everybody builds her super slow, super high stat, and relies on, you know, focus filling up her passive to, you know, be able to deal those counterattacks back. Rylet also will be completely, you know, neutered by the lack of focus. You'll have no qualms hitting him because it doesn't matter if he dodges when he can't, you know, trigger his skill 3 when his uh, focus bar fills up. So that's pretty pretty powerful counter to those two units. Um, not a ton of other heroes use focus, but presumably more will come down the line. I guess another might be Arby. Uh, when Arby's focus is full, he does more damage. So that's kind of like a little minor benefit, but that's probably not like a reason to draft this hero just to counter Arby to counter Arby's focus. It will make him do a little bit less damage when he reses. So. I guess that's a nice perk, but I think you're primarily going to be drafting her to combat enemy units like Seaside Bologna and Remnant Violet. Skill 3 is Boom, Starlight Fall. Decreases the enemy's buff duration by one turn before attacking with Starlight, stunning for one turn before decreasing combat readiness by 30%. Grants stealth to the caster for two turns. Interesting, so this is an AoE ability. It has a three turn cooldown after you mullet it. Three turns is pretty fast, so this is gonna be coming up, you know, probably twice in a fight, uh, assuming it's a normal duration, potentially three times or more. And it will decrease the enemy's buffs by one turn, so that'll get rid of immunity, regardless of if they have anything else like barriers or anything like that. And then it will do an AoE stun for one turn, 100%, so you don't have to worry about if you get the percentage or not, before decreasing their combat readiness by 30%, which is pretty much the same thing as Basar's pushback, I think. And that is that is a huge pushback. So she strips off immunity, she stuns, and she pushes back. She doesn't slow, and then it gives her stealth for two turns, which is really nice. If you soul burn this, it will extend the duration of buffs granted to the caster by Boom Starlight Fall by one turn, and it grants her an extra turn. So she'll get that stealth for a bonus turn, and then she'll get another turn after that, which is pretty nice. It'll basically mean soul burning this will allow you to follow up with a skill one, I guess, and because her skill two is a passive, and it will not uh, give you the same problem that Emma Lulica has, you know, when she kind of like turns cycles out of Dingus Orb, because it will increase uh, the duration of her stealth, so she'll get that full two turns of stealth whether you soul burn this or not. So this seems like a very powerful skill three. There's a lot loaded into this kit. It does kind of suffer a little bit from the flurry effect in that you have a lot of 15% checks along the way that you can fail at, right? You can fail that first decrease buff duration by one turn. And if you fail that one, just like with flurry, if you fail the strip, 
nothing's going to land if everyone has immunity. Then you can also fail 15% on the stun, and you can fail 15% on the CR pushback. That said, though, um, I think it'll be a very powerful skill one and most or skill three. And most of the time you use it, you're gonna strip most of the team, stun most of them, and push them back. You know, you might get a few here and there within that that either resist the stun or you know resist the pushback or resist everything. But because you're doing this as an AOE attack, you're gonna get a significant amount of value from this. I don't think it will feel as bad as when you whiff on flurry because that's only a single target thing, and you know. Um, this will be mitigated by the fact that you're getting some value on the other heroes. Okay, so the skill one is Pew Pew Pew, attacks the enemy with magic with a 25% chance to stun for one turn. Uh, her skill three also has a stun, so there's a lot of stuns in this kit. When used on the caster's turn, Pew 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 becomes an attack that targets all enemies. The changed attack does not trigger a dual attack. So basically just uh, an AoE stun, potential for an AoE stun on her skill one. And when it's her turn, it'll be, you know, AoE. I think they've learned their lesson from Dizzy. We've seen now a couple of heroes that operate this way with Solitary being one of them, where when it's her turn, she gets the AoE attack. But if you build her on counter set, she's not gonna AoE. I think, you know, Smilegate has realized how broken of a mechanic that is. And even though Dizzy is not super relevant in the meta right now, that skill one will always be busted on counter set. The amount of value you get from that is just huge. I think they've realized it's just too much to put on a skill one. So I doubt we're ever going to see that again. But this seems to be kind of the balanced version of that. Um, Holiday Euphine would be another one where when it's not her turn, she does an AoE. And when it is her turn, it is AoE. Um, similar with the Champion's Trophy on her. You know, they don't want her being put on counter set and AoE stunning everybody. So overall, I think this would be a pretty decent skill one. I guess we don't know what her modifiers are yet, um, so we don't really know how much damage it'll do. It'll only be a 25% chance to stun, so not super reliable on the stun. Uh, but if it AoEs, you're hitting four people, and if none of them have immunity, like there's a decent chance you're going to stun one person every time she skill ones. Um, on average, you'll be stunning one person. Um, I think it'll come down to how much damage she does uh, to determine how widely she's going to be drafted. Right now, just looking at her kit alone, I think she's gonna be a really strong four or five pick into a draft where the opponent has already drafted SSB or Rylet. Uh, it's a little awkward for Rylet these days because he already had a few counters with Blue Crow and Viseria and then ML Crow to a lesser degree. Made it hard to pick him early. And now there's going to be Solitaria. You know, this is another ML5 counter. Um, ML counters to units are particularly potent because you don't have to worry about that elemental problem with them. You can just confidently know that they are always going to be able to take them as a counter pick. Uh, so what I mean by that is, like, let's say, for example, you're in a draft where you know that Fire Ravi is a great counter pick to the opponent, but they already have SSB or they already have Blue Crow, something like that. It's um, because of that elemental disadvantage, you, you then can't really take the Ravi. Um, so it can be harder to fit in the RGB counter type units, whereas the ML5 ones, you know, because they're just light dark, you can take them pretty much any time, regardless of what the enemy has. You don't have to worry about the elemental disadvantage. Um, so just based off what we've seen here, she'll definitely be a super strong counter pick in those scenarios. Uh, I think she could have a broader usage if she does a decent amount of damage. Um, you know, she strips and stuns all in the same kit, so that's going to be pretty valuable. She protects herself, um, but if they don't have a focus unit, uh, I don't feel like she's going to bring enough value to justify taking her. And you never know down the line, will Smilegate release more units of focus? I'm sure it'll happen, and how you know impactful will they be? Obviously, it remains to be seen. So I think this is a type of hero that out the gate we're going to see drafted in the 4-5 to five slot against the heroes I've mentioned. And down the line, she could fall out of the meta, you know, if those units like Rylet and SSB fall out of the meta. And then whenever a focus unit comes back, she's going to surge right back in, I think is what's going to happen. So should you pull her or not? I think that if you are gunning for legend or, you know, like high champion, I think you have a strong incentive to pull her because having access to these really powerful counter picks um, is extremely impactful in your draft you know being able to put yourself in a position where you can take this unit in the fifth spot 
and say, this is a must ban, right? Because if you don't ban this, then one or more of the units on your team is completely useless. Um, it allows you to really control the draft and to force your opponent to ban that fifth slot and give you the first four. Um, beyond that, does not doesn't seem like a must pull at all to me. Um, so if she's waifu or just seems like fun, go for it. But um, otherwise you can probably skip. Um, I will be pulling her. Um, she seems pretty cool. So we'll try to do a little debut once uh, she goes into the rotation. Uh, that'll be it for now. So thanks for watching. Later.